Welcome back for another Pierre K. Avo discussion, explication, video essay. I'm Rabbi Drew Kaplan. We are now on to the 12th text in the second chapter. And here, this is, we are in the third, we are in the middle, third of five, we're right in the middle of hearing three different pieces, three different things, really, from the five disciples of Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai at the end of the first century of the Common Era. Now, we have, we are moving on to the third one. This is Rabbi Yossi HaKohen. This is Rabbi Yossi, the priest, not to be confused with Rabbi Yossi ben Chalafta, who is very commonly cited in the Mishnah. In fact, the fifth most cited rabbi in the Mishnah. But this Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi HaKohen, Rabbi Yossi, the priest, we don't actually hear a lot from him throughout rabbinic literature. So this is actually a rare opportunity, a rare chance within rabbinic literature to glean from the wisdom of Rabbi Yossi, the priest. Now, I also want to point out just a few texts ago, we had him described by his teacher, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, as simply chassid. Chassid translates to pious. So Rabbi Yossi HaKohen, at least in his teacher's eyes, is pious. So here are his three pieces of wisdom. The first is, may the money, may your friend's money be beloved to you as if it were your own. This is a really interesting insight. It's easy, I would imagine, for us to treat other people's money, certainly our friend's money, maybe, we all hold our own, uh, certainly our property in general, but in particular, our own money in a high regard. Now, Rabbi Yossi HaKohen here is advocating that we think about just as we value our money in a very precious and special way, we also think of our friends and sort of perhaps even more broadly other people's money also as being uh, special and not to be just bandied about willy-nilly. The second of them is set yourself, fix for yourself to study Torah. Fix for yourself to study Torah. And he actually gives a reason for this one because it is not... It is, you do not inherit it, or it's not yours by inheritance. So this is, first of all, the language is really interesting as far as studying Torah. Fix for yourself. He doesn't say just set a time. It's literally, the, the phrasing is to fix, as if somehow things are not the way they should be, and you need to fix it. So he, he advocates, he suggests here, he advises fixing in your own schedule, as it were, although he doesn't necessarily say, he actually doesn't make a chronological or temporal claim about setting time. He just says, fix for yourself to study Torah. Not sure what that means, if that's fix it in your schedule, if it's somewhere else in your life or some other way, but you need to do this. Interestingly, he provides this reason because it is not a Yerushalach. It is not, you don't just, in, you don't inherit it. This is a really fascinating language to use surrounding this, especially since we have a really interesting verse in the book of Deuteronomy. It's in chapter 33, verse 4. I'm going to read the Hebrew and then translate it. Torah tziva lanu Moshe morasha kihilas Yaakov. There's, people love singing this song also. Torah tziva lanu Moshe, Torah tziva lanu Moshe. Okay, and it goes on, but morasha kihilas Yaakov, okay? It's interesting because the language here, morasha, Kehilas Yaakov, as the heritage of the congregation of Jacob. It, Torah was commanded, uh, Moses commanded the Torah to us as a heritage, it's a heritage of the congregation of Jacob. So Torah is a heritage. It is a morasha. Although Rabbi Yosei Kohen here advocates She'eno Yerushalach. It's the exact same root, perhaps a little bit different though. Morasha, perhaps, I'm, I'm trying to advocate for Rabbi Yosei Kohen here. I think in his mind, it's one thing for it to be a morasha, heritage, or somehow to be an inheritance for you. It's set there for you, but you need to actually do something about it to go and acquire it as your own, and to actually inherit it. I think that's what he's suggesting here. All right, now the third and final piece of Rabbi Yosei Cohen's advice or wisdom here is, V'chol ma'asecha yu l'shem shemaim. All of your actions should be for the name of heaven or for the sake of heaven really lovely. A little bit unclear exactly what Rabbi Yosei Cohen here has in mind. Um, I think ostensibly, I think just on the surface of it, it's whatever you do 
have in mind you're doing it for heaven's sake or, or really for the sake of God or somehow befitting the reputation of God or at least as one beholds or otherwise has in mind God. So I think that's ostensibly how he understands it, how we are to understand what he is suggesting. Um, I mean, one could kind of uh, sort of an inverse of that is um, sort of an after the fact uh, justification of whatever we do, we will claim that it is for the sake of heaven. I'm not, I don't think that that's where he's going for. That's, I think, a lot more cynical of a read of sort of an after the fact, oh yeah, yeah, that thing that I did, yeah, it was totally for God's name. I think really it's, it's really meant as a, as an aspiration that you know, especially given various situations, what should I do? You say, oh, I should do this because that's, uh, that would befit the name of heaven. So these are the pieces, three pieces of wisdom from Rabbi Yossi Kohen, And thank you so much for watching.